Hi everybody, my name is AJ Mitchell and I'm a nuclear physicist. I hope you're all enjoying this masterclass that's been run by the University of Liverpool this week. I think it's a really great initiative. Um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about my career so far in nuclear science um, and just a, a little bit of insight into the, into the pathway, into the journey that I have taken um, over the last, I guess, 10 to 15 years or so. So I grew up in Northern Ireland and, and studied there for a while. That's where I did my undergraduate. Um, I then went to, to England to study for a PhD. And then my career pathway has taken me through North America. Studied, or I worked in the US for a while before finally coming out to Australia. So I'm, I'm talking to you now from Canberra in Australia. I've been working at the Australian National University for about five and a half years now. But if I go back to, to where it all began, I guess, a town called Balamina, uh, it's about 30 odd miles north of Belfast there. Probably more famous for horrible weather, um, people like Liam Neeson than it is for nuclear physics. But um, for some reason, it was, it was one thing that um, always really stood out to me when I, was, when I was studying. It's been something I was interested in, but I'll come back to that later. So as I said, I always really enjoyed studying mathematics and sciences in general, really. Um, so when I got to A-level, I studied four subjects. I studied maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry. And like a lot of you guys now, probably thinking to myself, okay, right, I'm studying these subjects, but where can I go with that? What can I do? Um, so after a bit of thinking um, and, and weighing up different options, I decided to make a trip down the road to Belfast. So I went to Queen's University in Belfast to study um, an MA's degree in chemical engineering. And after the first year, I started asking myself a lot of questions. Um, I really enjoyed living in Belfast. It was a great city. I made a lot of friends. A lot of my friends from school were in, in Belfast as well, I say. So I, I was enjoying being there, but there was just something that didn't quite sit right with me with the, the content that I was studying. Um, and I couldn't really see myself working in chemical engineering for the next 40 years. So I, I was given the opportunity to change the degree, actually. So I, I took a second stab at it um, and transferred over to applied mathematics and physics degree. And, and this was a little bit scary at the time, um, but absolutely one of those life-changing um, decisions and um, something that I'm, I'm really glad that I did. Um, so I, I spent the next few years uh, finishing that degree and of course you come to the end of undergrad, the, this question keeps coming back to you, you know, what do I do next? So I started looking, um, looking at things that I'd done during that degree, um, asked myself, okay, so what work, what practical experience do I have work-wise? So I did a couple of internships, um, which was really important, I'd say. Um, you'll find that a lot of careers, that it, it's really, um, it's something that sets you apart um, from other applicants for jobs, if you can demonstrate some some sort of real life experience in an area. So I did a research um, internship with an organization called ISD, uh, the ETH University in Zurich in Switzerland. I also did some work with, in the um, Northern Ireland Water Finance and Regulation section. Um, they gave me some insight into accountancy and finance. Um, what subjects was I really interested in? Well, I knew I really like Mars, I really like physics. Um, and where did I want to go? Well, I, I thought probably I'd like to experience somewhere that's outside of Northern Ireland. Um, but the, the three key points for me here was I loved, had an absolute ball doing the, the summer research program. Um, as I said earlier, the nuclear physics thing was something that had always just sort of stuck in the back of my mind is like, just wow, um, this is really interesting stuff. Um, and I thought, Okay, next step, probably somewhere still within the UK, um, but outside of, outside of Northern Ireland was probably um, where I was thinking of going. Um, given the research background, um, I thought, okay, next logical step after doing undergraduate is to go and do a PhD. So I started looking around the UK for, for PhD positions, specifically in nuclear physics. And it just so happened that the University of Manchester has a long-standing um, history of in nuclear science. Um, there was a, an opportunity to work with Professor Sean Freeman um, on, in one of the projects that he was he was undertaking at the time, and I'd, I got an offer to go and start a PhD. So that's exactly what I did. 
Um, but, but again, um, was taking a bit of a leap into the unknown. Just around this time, this is when Big Bang Theory was still, their jokes were all focused on science. Um, I don't know whether I was stepping into some dodgy episode of The Simpsons or whatnot, but um, do you know what? I, I took, that, took that leap and again, spent another, another number of years in Manchester um, started really studying a, a topic that I, I find that I was really deeply interested in and, and enjoyed a lot. So what is a PhD? Um, well, it basically, it's, it's a higher level degree, as I said, that you take typically after undergraduate. That's really, the change here is that it's, it's really research focused. So when you're doing undergraduate, you'll maybe do some research projects as you go along with your coursework courses. Um, but the PhD, this is really, you know, this, you, you spend a lot of time working on a particular project and get your teeth um, deep into it. So that involves um, performing original research. So in my case, so I was doing experimental nuclear physics. Um, the project that I work on was um, doing a series of measurements where we were investigating how certain components of that strong nuclear force would, would evolve, would change, whenever you take a certain nucleus. Um, in, this, in this case, it was um, isotopes of antimony with 51 protons. Um, and what happens whenever you add more and more neutrons into that system. Um, so the experiments I did was to track basically what the what those nuclei were doing in there. So I had to plan those experiments, we had to do the experiments, um, analyze data, and present the work at, at conferences, <laughs> write a thesis, that's the big thing at the end. Um, but also I was lucky that I got to do some teaching as well, so that was something that um, I, I've always really enjoyed doing. So um, at that stage, so, You've been through undergraduate, been through um, postgraduate. So what next? So for me, I say I I love doing the PhD, um, and I wanted to try and find a, a job in research. I just happened to come across in that sort of three four months before I was due to finish the PhD, a job was advertised the University of Massachusetts in in the United States that I applied for, and I I was offered the job, which made. Um, put a little bit of pressure on trying to get the thesis finished in time but it all worked out so that landed me in this sort of middle position here um what we call postdoc or postdoctoral research associates that's the the first step on the on the ladder after you finish studying so say i i went then it was a two-year position um working based at the university just outside boston but the research project i was working on was based at argonne national laboratory um, in Chicago. So my, my project here was to build a piece of equipment that you can see in uh, a couple of photographs on the, on the slide here that we were going to use that equipment to study really exotic nuclei. So these are ones that have more and more neutrons um, that push them far away from stability. So on that chart um, that you can see um, we've got, this is our nuclear physics periodic table. Um, that thin black line is all the stable nuclei that would exist, that you could find most of them sort of naturally on Earth. As you head further and further away into the pink region, that's the sort of nuclei that I was wanting to study. So they undergo radioactive decay, and this equipment that I was building um, can measure that radiation as it comes off the decay, and we can use that as a jigsaw to figure out what that nucleus looks like. So my two years finished up and the stars aligned and I got offered a job in, at the Australian National University. So, so that was initially for a one year period, um, started early 2015 and here we are sort of five and a half years later, <laughs> I'm still working here now. So in the slide you can see our heavy ion accelerator facility on the, on the edge of Lake Burley Griffin there. Um, the tower, this whole tower in the middle, that's where our particle accelerator is. Um, we've got a 15 million volt machine here that really drives all of the research programs that are, that are based in-house here. So I would encourage um, anybody who's interested, we, we have an online tour, you can see the link at the bottom. Um, please click, you know, go to that link um, and have a look around. We've got some nice videos that, that show you what the inside of the accelerator looks like and some of the other equipment that we have around the lab. So I work as a lecturer here now. Um, most of what I do is research orientated. So my, my primary interest hasn't really changed from the PhD, although the techniques are different. Techniques that I use now are different, but I'm, I'm interested in 
what we broadly classify as nuclear structure research. So that's whenever you take this, this random, seemingly random collection of protons and neutrons, and there can be hundreds of them in a nucleus, um, but we, we see that they have a structure. It's not just a random um, sort of um, chaotic behavior. Um, we can um, observe radiation that comes off it and build up a picture of what quantum excited states in that nucleus looks like. Um, and then compare that to theoretical models to figure out um, what that nucleus is actually doing in there. Part of my work also involves developing equipment to, to do my research. Um, and also one thing, one project that I've started working on recently, um, in collaboration with the US Army is looking at um, new energy applications of nuclei. So how basically whenever you have certain conditions that you can store nuclear energy in nuclei for a long time, how can we use that um, in, a, in a useful way? As I said earlier, I really love teaching as well. Um, so some of the, my other responsibilities are around um, teaching undergraduate and postgraduate kind of standard uh, coursework courses that um, you'd be familiar with um, at, at any university kind of around the world. I work really closely with a group of research students as well. Um, but one of the things that I have loved about my job is the, the opportunities that come um, across that I would never have expected to whenever I was growing up. Um, some of the international work that I've been involved in over the last few years has involved um, doing capacity building work in countries like Myanmar and Timor-Leste um, and Samoa as well. Um, I've also gotten um, some experience in delivering training courses to government officials um, here in Australia. So a whole mix. So uh, it's a bit cliche to say, but you know, every day is different. Um, that's again, that's um, one of the things that I really like. You know, it's um, every day has a different priority. Um, right now, one of those is around writing research grants, but um, and and trying to grade exams for our, our undergraduates who have just finished. But um, that'll finish, and then something else will take off. Um, so yeah, it's all it's it's really exciting, I, and I am really passionate about it. So I'm going to finish up there. This is just a short introduction to the sort of things that, that I do as a nuclear scientist. Um, so a few tips that I have for you guys, I'd say um, first thing is to follow your passion, but also keep your mind open um, to new, the possibility for new experiences. So as I said, you know, as a small, I've grown up in a small town in Northern Ireland, I would never have imagined um, the places that I've been through work. Um, so, um, don't be afraid to say yes to those things as they come up, um, but also don't be afraid to change your mind either. Let's say um, they, they can be difficult decisions to make, but um, ultimately if they're well thought out, you know, life doesn't follow a linear pathway. And if you talk to people who have experience, um, that's gonna go a long way to um, helping those decisions um, be a lot easier for you. And the last thing I'm gonna leave with here is don't forget writing skills are as important as your science knowledge. So. I spend, um, I was, I'm actually surprised by the amount of time that I spend writing. Um, if I'd have known that when I was 16, 15, 16, I would have thought very differently about the English classes that I was taking in school. But there's a lot of writing involved in, in and communicating in general um, as well, giving presentations about the research that we do. Um, we, we publish papers in, in science journals. Um, we have to write grant applications to apply for funding at uh, different, um, different times of the year. Whole loads of ways um, where communication skills are really important. So bear that in mind. So I'm going to finish up there. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. And just to say as well, if anybody is interested in, in following up, if you have any questions about anything, um, please feel free to get in touch. You can see my email down at the bottom of the slides here. Um, this has been a sh just a short chat today, um, but as I say, always, um, always keen to chat to anybody who's interested in learning more about nuclear physics or, or what it's like to work in the area. So um, I'll leave it there and all the best and I hope you enjoy the rest of the course.